I want to talk about something to clarify something. Whenever f**k-wit dudes want to come to me and be like, this is why I think that Drew is actually extremely harmful, they try to say this. Why don't you try listening? Like, why don't you try, like, debating someone then? My response to that is very simple. F**k no, bitch. I'm not doing that. And when I say that with no explanation, the Neanderthals go like this. See, she knows that she would get owned in an argument. First of all, you can't even win an argument with your own genetics. You think you could win an argument with me? Really? Because that's exactly what someone would say if they were afraid to debate. Sun Tzu once said that if you're strong, pretend you're weak. If you're weak, then pretend you're strong. Well, Drew is pretending to be strong, so what does that say about her? But moreover than that, why on God's green earth would I lend my time and my ear to someone who quite literally doesn't think that I am an equal human to them? <laughs> why would I waste my f***ing time platforming someone who genuinely believes that women are lesser than? Why would I do that? How many times have we heard the Anita Sarkeesian types use this line to avoid discourse? I won't debate because I don't want to platform these kinds of people. Here's the thing. If you are so good at debate, then them being a terrible person is wonderful because you can then use that debate to expose them, which will boost your viewership while destroying theirs. If you have such powerful conversational skills, then this should be really easy for you. Anyway, this is Drew Afawalo, a strong, independent, rising TikTok star who attacks misogyny and gives men who don't share her political views the mean words they deserve yet plays the victim when mean things are said about her. If I was a small white woman, if I was a white man, um, they would never treat me the way that they treat me now. She takes this all out of context, so none of us have any idea exactly what she's referring to. But if people are saying bad things about you, then they probably aren't doing it because of your sex and race. It's more likely a mixture of, welcome to the internet, everyone here gets shit on, and because you constantly say stuff like this. And you can go fuck yourself, bitch. <laughs> or you could just suck my ass. <laughs> It's either this, or it's that super annoying laugh that you use in your videos. <laughs> Good god, this laugh makes nails on chalkboard sound like Mozart. And it's fair game to make fun of it, even by woke standards, because this is not her natural laugh. In her older videos, there's no sign of it. She actually developed this over time. Here's one of the prototype laughs from an older video before she found the right tune. You guys want to know something that just... Oh my gosh, it's gonna send me to the loony bin! <laughs> Most of Drew's content centers around what she calls reactive content against people who say mean things to people on her ideological team, unprovoked. Which is a fancy way of saying, I can say whatever mean and offensive stuff I want and still be perceived as a good person, because I'm just reacting to misogyny. My philosophy has always been this. If you're going to attack someone unprovoked, if you are gonna call someone ugly unprovoked, you better be carved from f***ing marble, bitch. Everything I say is intentional and on purpose. Everything I say to them specifically is meant to be mean. Uh, no. A good person exposes evil without stooping down to the level of their opponents. And the reason you strive to do that is because if you keep using more and more degenerate tactics to win the fight, then eventually you'll burn everything down. Plus, in this case, Drew and people like her literally call everything misogyny, so that word has no meaning. Let's go back to that first video. But I digress. In the midst of them spinning their f***ing wheels to like try and get a valid reason why they just don't like me, that's not tied to like outright bigotry. So if you want to circle with other misogynists, get your own f***ing show bitch oh please you give people a lot of reasons to not like you after that line she then goes on to cope about why she won't debate also here's another example of her saying that if you don't like her you're a misogynist and they're like i don't know why this bitch is a platform she's not even funny and this is coming from a bitch with no platform right their idea of funny is like being a bigot being racist being fat phobic being misogynistic yes because having taste and humor that is different from yours immediately makes someone else a bad person well, to morally grandstand, I do have to say that I think Drew is actually funny, and she genuinely made me laugh a few times while doing research for this video. I just don't like her ideology. But in terms of woke people, I would much prefer her to someone like Amy Schumer, Hannah Gatsby, or Lily Singh. Though I'm not sure how her humor is not considered misandrous by her own standards. I've watched like 40 of her videos, and I have never seen her crap on women. Not even once. Not very equal, right? 
The worst thing I've heard her say about women is, it makes me sad when they disagree with me. When I have women coming after me, it's very, very, very rare. But when I do get it, that's the only time that I kind of feel like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Even though I think roast humor is funny, and she does have some pretty good roast, I, however, don't appreciate Drew's hypocrisy. I also don't enjoy the whole everything is misogyny bit. But let's see an example of what she calls misogynistic. Now, before I show this, I'm going to cut some of the audio because it contains music, I don't want to get copyright claimed and because the audio portions with the music aren't really relevant to the story. Anyway. <laughs> First off, before we get into the content, I went ahead and took a look at your profile to uh, add to my research. Let me show y'all what I saw. Also, I feel like it's necessary I tell you this. You have one of the most unathletic runs I've ever fucking seen in my life, bitch. <laughs> Haven't clocked many behind the wheel hours, have you? I can tell. Because like my friend Lucas said, those sweatpants? <laughs> They're damning evidence. That's all I'ma say. <laughs> if I were you and I was gonna make this shitty ass misogynistic content, I would wear something that leaves a little more to the imagination, friend. And last, but certainly not least, your hair looks like Hershey's magic shell sauce. <laughs> By your own rules of only doing reactive content to bad people, how exactly is this misogyny that justifies you making fun of his appearance? Again, this is a person who will call you fatphobic or a misogynist if you make fun of her appearance. Love the drag towards fat women for literally no reason at all. Before I say a fucking thing, before I say a word, this man has a lot of content fat shaming women. Way to say that you can dish it out, but you can't handle it when it's said about you. Now, personally, I don't agree with woke people on this one. I think commentary on someone's appearance is free speech and therefore a fair game, especially if it's something they can change. Also, even though they say it's wrong, clearly woke people believe it's okay to make fun of people's appearances because they do it all the time towards people they disagree with, even for appearance factors that can't be changed. Certainly, Drew does that. Now, for a second, let's go back to that other guy. Here he says, don't be friends with a guy who has a lot of crazy exes. How is this misogynistic? He's actually making a commentary on the guy, not women. Also, homophobic much? I mean, it says exes here, not ex-girlfriends. Did you just assume their gender? Even the original video that she's responding to is not misogynistic. He's not saying, I hate women, women bad. He's saying a particular girl was not good in bed. That is not an example of prejudice against an entire group of people for what they were born as. Do you want to see a real example of prejudice? This is what that looks like. I think white supremacy is really ironic considering how aggressively mediocre white people are at everything. Uh, that statement was racist. And if you think that it doesn't count because it's against people who were born white, then you're still a racist. Drew, can you start to see why people may have some bad things to say about you? Be honest with yourself. There is so much hypocrisy here. She makes all these statements about how she doesn't care about mean comments, but she obviously is lying. A lot of them are trying to get in my comments and hurt my feelings. <laughs> and guess what, bitch? You've never met my mom, so you can't hurt my feelings. They regenerate at superhuman speed. I just want to take a second to go over the science here. If your feelings have to regenerate, then it means they got hurt. But you clearly do care because you get all offended whenever anybody mentions obesity. I'm 11, for me at least. Uh, just taller pushing, than me. Pushing, pushing I'll take a shorty, but taller than Listen, absolutely no beef with these three queens. I will say this though, men that still make content like this, where they do street interviews and ask like purposely antagonistic things, there's a special place in hell for you, buddy. She's right. These kinds of street interview videos are stupid. But let's continue with Drew completely ignoring the double standard of height and weight. These three women were actually very respectful with this answer. But did the men in the comment section return this favor? No, of course they f***ing didn't. Next up. This is a real common comment. They're like, yes, queen. Next up. Men love to equate. They love to equate height to weight. What exactly was so bad about those? There was one comment talking about the girl's weight. And then the others were just pointing out the double standard that women can go on and on about how they want a tall guy, but people like Drew will lose their mind if guys start saying they want a woman who is thin. So Drew says, go get that tall man, queen, but then gets all pissy when people mention that guys generally don't want girls who are overweight or obese. Huh, maybe her focus on that issue has something to do with her personal situation. It's not only hypocritical to say that guys aren't allowed to want what they want while girls are, 
It's also hypocritical because you have control over your weight, but you can't control your height. And Drew makes fun of things that people can't change all the time. Here's an example of that. Listen up, James Corden, okay? I can tell you've been hurt. I can tell you've been wronged in a past life, brother. I'm here for you, okay? I just have two questions. Number one, how tall are you? Just as I suspected. Number two, it's not very big, is it? It's not very big, is it? And here's another example from a video where people were reacting to her talking about bulking tips. Next we have, you've bulked enough, mate. What method of transportation do you prefer? Like bike, car, your ears? <laughs> First off, I wouldn't take diet advice from Drew. Second, if you were asking for bulking tips, then you are probably too much of a beginner to need to bulk. At least at the lower levels, you can build a ton of muscle without getting fat. Bulking and cutting cycles are unnecessary. It's called a body recomposition, and you can learn how to do that by watching the many videos that are on it. Here's one of them. As for higher levels of muscles, like competition levels, I'm not sure if the recompositioning method works. Third, this guy points out that she doesn't need to bulk, and not only does she go into his profile to show his username and face, which, by the way, in terms of content creation, is considered punching down and low class. The reason for that is because he doesn't have a platform to fight back. Picking on people who can't fight back is bullying, and I mention that because a pretty large portion of Drew's content is picking on people who don't have a platform big enough to retaliate, who will then, by the way, also be attacked by her audience. So not only that, but she also makes fun of his ears, which he cannot change, as opposed to him making fun of her weight, which she can. Oh, and there is so much cope and gaslighting from her in response to the guys pointing out the obesity issue. What about preferences? Some men just have preferences. They don't want to date fat women. So prefer in fucking silence, bitch. Nobody is forcing you to date fat people. Actually, people are definitely trying to do that. Here's a viral TikTok of it. Hey, bestie. <laughs> You're wrong. Having a preference is something like... I'm looking for a partner who likes kayaking, or wakes up early in the morning, or loves pizza. <laughs> but when your preferences exclude an entire group of marginalized people, that's problematic. Okay, that's not nice. That's not a preference. If you lump all fat people in one group together as though they are not very different individuals, that's fat phobic. And here's another TikTok of that. This is the perfect video to talk about the fact that thin people feel obligated, like they have the right to talk about larger bodies just because they are in a thin one. If society didn't paint fat people in a negative light, there would be no reason why anybody wouldn't want to date us. But instead, you guys want to hold on to this logic that you're not dating fat people all on your own, even though society coerced you into feeling that way. So that is not a preference. A preference is I prefer blondes over brunettes. Saying you don't date fat people or never want to is absolutely discrimination. I mean, they have been doing this stuff for years. How many times have you heard the phrase, we need more realistic female body types in media, which is yet again another double standard because the unrealistic body types they complain about are just women who are thin. Meanwhile, you have actual unrealistic standards for men, which shows like He-Man, which depict men with levels of muscle that you can only get when you use steroids. Or what about all the male actors in action movies who use steroids to accomplish a two-year body transformation in six months? I think PewDiePie is like the only person who has ever talked about that. Or what about closed doors? I've been to a bunch of them and I have yet to see a male mannequin that is overweight. But I see female mannequins that are overweight all the time. I also don't think I have ever seen an overweight male model in the men's section of a closed store either. All of them are either thin or jacked. Yet in the female section, you see varying body types all over the place. Go to your local mall and test this out. You won't be disappointed. The super ironic thing, though, is that Drew actually uses her TikTok to promote a fitness program that she's involved in. Be strong like Drew. Oh, you mean Drew who loves to complain about how much she hates exercise? I don't ever want to work out. I don't ever want to be here. I procrastinate. I'm, uh... Yeah, this really is the person I want to help train me. The person who hates exercise and gaslights people about how much of a problem obesity is. Well, actually, this is her boyfriend's personal training program that she rubber stamps to help with the marketing. I did some research on her boyfriend, and without getting into it, I have to say that based on what I found, this business would not succeed without her help. Outside of that, and even more ironic, is that one of the major marketing tactics they use to sell this program is her boyfriend's weight loss. Isn't that fat phobic? Aren't we here to promote health with all kinds of diverse body types? Suggesting that you have to be thin to be in shape is super discriminatory, right? 
and of course drew gaslights about her health by bragging about how much she can lift. Contrary to what the men on this app who hate me think, your girl does work out pretty frequently. But not because I hate myself, but because I love to feel strong. I'm already taller than most of these men. I might as well be stronger. Here's me deadlifting 225. You know, slight work, you feel me? Your arteries don't care about how much you can deadlift. You can be strong and unhealthy at the same time. Yet certainly for a female, that is a pretty solid deadlift. But in this case, she was comparing herself to men. Personally, I am weak as shit and I can still deadlift 225. And I can do it without dropping the weight like she did. I hope you don't teach your clients to drop the weight like that during the most beneficial part of the exercise. Now we only saw her do half of one rep, so it is possible that this is her one rep max. I have to say that it only takes a few months of training for a guy to get a one rep max of 225 on a deadlift. This is not really something to brag about. Of course, she also gaslights in a follow-up video saying that she wasn't bragging. So I've peeped the new trend, right, of all these gym bros <laughs> using my video of me deadlifting to fat shame me. <laughs> I want to talk about the context from where that video came from. The one that they're all using, I want to tell you what it's from. That video is from an ad that I posted back in January, bitch. But the ad itself is literally a campaign where I'm reminding people with uteruses to go get their pap smears. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> the way that y'all can't do anything right. <laughs> That is some massive cope. Sure, you were just selling a product and weren't trying to brag at all. You just so happened to include, look how strong I am, in that video. A point that had zero relevance to the ad. That ad on cervical cancer just came out of nowhere. Marketing 101, typically you want to tell a story that is relevant to what you're selling. Like a heartfelt story about a family member or a friend who got cervical cancer, or some sort of anecdote that the advertiser gives you. I know I've said this term a lot, but holy crap, this girl gaslights and lies about everything, including her relationship. When people say things like, hey, you aren't really displaying behavior that good men are attracted to, she's like, guess what? I have a man. Men who f***ing hate me will watch my videos and be like, why would you listen to this girl? Listen to this girl if you want to be alone forever. I've been with my man for five years, bitch. When people point out that she probably is not in a good relationship or he probably won't marry her, she continues to gaslight. And every time I say five years, men are going to be like, but still isn't married you, has it? We're not in the 1950s, bitch. I don't need him to open a bank account. We're going to get married when we're ready. Um, five years is a long time. Either shit or get off the pot. You're 26, and I'm sure he's a similar age considering that you went to high school together. At your age, you should know within a year whether or not someone is marriage material. And that's important because contrary to the belief of millennials and Zoomers, you don't have forever to do stuff. There's a time limit to everything, which is why you shouldn't be wasting massive segments of your life, like five years in a relationship that isn't going to lead you to what you want. From my perspective, it doesn't sound like he wants to marry you. Maybe there's a reason for that. If we're talking clubbing or bar hopping with your girlies, girl, I firmly believe that you should let these cis hetero men buy you and your friends drinks all night long. Don't pay for a single thing. I don't even think you should bring a wallet. You should bring nothing but your good energy to the club. These men, girl, they will break the bank for potential coochie. They would do that. And you know what? That is none of your business. And no, you shouldn't feel bad. They're not talking to you because they want to know your favorite color. They're trying to get some ass. Let me do some math here. She's around 25 in this video. The legal drinking age is 21. Her and her boyfriend have been together for five years. So assuming that she didn't have a fake ID, she's been accepting drinks and flirting with other guys regularly for most of their relationship. Those drinks aren't free. Guys are buying them for a reason, and she said as much. I don't know about her boyfriend, but I would be pretty mad if my girlfriend was flirting with other guys to the extent where she actively recommends that to other people on a public forum and doesn't think that's a problem. Most personal trainers don't make that much, so Drew at some point might be looking for an upgrade. Speaking of fitness, to her credit, Drew used to be thin and in pretty good shape. Here's a picture of that from her early days on TikTok. You can see that she used to take care of her health, but has now stopped doing that. If I were her boyfriend, I would also be mad about that. I think for either party, not taking care of your appearance is an insult to your partner. And seriously, do people just forget that sex is an important part of a relationship? I'm not saying that you have to be cut like a Greek god or a Greek goddess, but you should at least look like you're trying. Wait, how does she deadlift with those long nails? Now I'm curious. 
Last, Drew seems to think that doing any sort of housework or taking care of your partner is misogyny. She reacted to a video of this teenage girl talking about her relationship. I'm not going to show it because there's music in the background, but the girl basically says that she understands her boyfriend's needs, gives him a massage when he's in pain after a workout, and gives him food. Sounds sweet, right? It sounds like she actually cares about the person she's with. Well, here's good old Drew telling her how things really work in the adult world. I'm dating an athlete. Females need- <laughs> No. Nope, I know she's 13, I know she's a fetus, so I'm not going to attack her personally. However, this argument, mm -mm. it's not it, sis. Take it from me, okay? I'm 25 years old, I spent my whole young adult life dating athletes, okay? Aside from the obvious internalized misogyny that this video is rife with, we need to talk about the messaging behind this, okay? Last time I checked, they didn't live in my uterus for nine months, and you know what that means? Not their fucking mom. That's what that means. It is very possible to be a supportive and loving partner to someone without being their fucking servant. How is helping your boyfriend with what he needs being a servant? It's called being in a reciprocal relationship. She does things for him and he does things for her. Do you not do nice things for your boyfriend like cook a meal, buy him a gift, or take care of him when he's sick or in pain? I mean, yeah, Drew promoted his personal training business, but I'm not so naive that I think she's not taking a cut of that in exchange for the promotion. Also, I've heard her multiple times refer to common house chores that everyone has to do as slave labor. Work and you both go to work, she's still coming home to cook for you. Mm -hmm. Because she understands taking care of a man is longevity with that man. Mm -hmm. Bro, you want short term um, relationships, yeah. they don't take care of them. Da, 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 da. Takes care of her man or works for him like she's working retail. Let's be really f***ing clear about what we're talking about, bitch. Because what you just described, that's a maid. Or your mom. This just says to me, dirty house and can't cook. I mean, I'm not a fan of these yeah bro channels that she's responding to either, but damn. Making a meal doesn't make you a servant. It makes you generous. From an outside perspective, it doesn't really sound like Drew is all that nice to her boyfriend, so I wouldn't be surprised if they don't end up married. And my question is, how much are you going to lie about the reality of your situation? The amount of gaslighting in that first video that I showed is ridiculous. Clearly, the negative comments bother her. Every platform that I've built by my f***ing self, including my show, is a safe space for my followers and anyone else who's looking for representation or giggles. If it doesn't bother you, then why would you need a safe space? Why not just teach your followers to be strong like you? Also, no, you don't get to do that. You're doing this on a public forum, and you have basically spent this whole time saying, I can say horrendous things about you, but if you say anything bad about me, then you're fat phobic and misogynistic, and I'm going to send all my followers after you because you made a comment unprovoked. That doesn't make you strong. It makes you a coward. Personally, for me, I don't care at all about the name calling from these people. I believe in free speech, so if you want to call me an incel or make fun of my voice, then go ahead. On that note, though, what I do find ironic is that woke people will say that you aren't allowed to say certain words because it will lead people to self-harm, yet they brutally trash incels who are a group of people who have massive issues with self-harm. But at the same time, also this. And the deeper down you go into black pill territory in the incel side, you go from red pill, PUA stuff, to black pill, you become more suicidal. Which is part of the reason why I always say every guy's a fucking seven. Okay, they will be interpreted as a seven if you do a couple different things. What what are those things? Immediately can figure out how to groom yourself. Okay, shower, figure out what kind of facial hair works for your face, figure out what kind of hair works for your head, figure out how to dress, what kind of clothes work for your body, what kind of style you like. Go to the fucking gym, go to the gym, go to the gym, go to the gym. Go to the gym, work out, work out, work out, work out, work out, okay? You might be too skinny. You might need to put on some weight, put on some muscle mass. You might be a little overweight. You might need to lose some, you know, cut some belly fat, trim some fat overall. Healthier diet and a healthier uh, workout will literally create more confidence within you, okay? Make long-term goals and short-term goals and mid-term goals. Those mid-term goals and short-term goals will then inevitably help you reach the long-term goals. I very much do not know what to think of Hassan. On one hand, his self-improvement advice like this is very accurate. On the other hand, he also does a lot of awful things and constantly steps on his own standards. But anyway, I believe in free speech, therefore the negative commentary is fair game. What I don't like though is the idea of, I want to be able to attack people but they shouldn't be able to say things back. 
mixed in with the institutional powers backing woke people up, and the constant moral grandstanding from these people about how great of a person they are, when in reality, people like Drew are incredibly prejudiced. The minute you don't agree with them on absolutely everything they have to say, you are the worst person in the world. It just, it blows my mind that people who are still at this point planning on voting for Trump, you know how I know that they're either just a bigot in disguise or just truly an unintelligent, big, fat dummy? You know how I know? Because those people like to be like, I'm not a racist, Uh, I'm not a racist, Uh." Those people love to claim that they're not a bigot. That's not why they're voting for him. It's the tax plan. It's Biden's tax plan. Bitch, you don't even make 45K a year. Wow, way to show empathy towards others and what a wonderful attempt to understand people who believe things that are different from you and why they believe them. This is how I know you aren't actually good at debate and why I think that first video I showed of you is just you making excuses to avoid discourse. Every part of that video was gaslighting. Drew is about as honest about why she doesn't want to debate as Hassan is honest about why he won't fight Sam Hyde. That's the actual problem with these kinds of people. It's not their political views. It's more so that they are modeling not being honest with themselves to an audience who will then absorb that behavior. I would much prefer a Drew Afawalo who says, you know what, it actually does hurt my feelings when people call me fat, over a Drew Afawalo who is clearly pretending to not care when she actually does. Now certainly being dishonest to other people is a problem, but some of the most harmful dishonesty is dishonesty towards yourself. Because everyone has problems and people who lie to themselves don't improve their situation. Dishonesty about obesity leads to people living half as long with twice as many health problems. Dishonesty about your relationships will lead you to being around a lot of pathological people who will make your life miserable. There are no safe spaces to protect you from that. If you keep lying to yourself and softening your language, then you'll never learn the lesson your problems are trying to teach you and bad things will just keep happening to you. One of the most dangerous things that woke people promote is problem avoidance. Now, if you have trouble with the kind of self-reflection that will lead you to being able to solve these problems, then you can start by simply lying less. The less you lie and the less you distort reality, the more effective you will get at identifying your problems and finding effective solutions. The reason honesty is seen as a good virtue is because you can't problem solve without it. Anyway, thanks for watching, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video.